All right, I made the first yoke. What this is going to do is... Okay, so there'll be two rails going through the chassis that house this. This is a two-axis hinge. And then this is going to go on that. And this is going to bolt to the end of that. So the leg can go up and down. Up, down, side to side. So this can now oscillate. So I got to make seven more of these. Measure once, drill seven more times. So I'm going to, instead of plot it out like I did in a prototype, I'm just going to stack them, drill them, and then do it that way. Over to the treadmill belt sander. I just mitered all these edges just to make them look a little more interesting. Some would say it's a waste of time, but I call it pride in my work. So now I got this two axis hinge. And originally, it's going to go upright like this. And I'm just going to weld a washer here to contain it. And this, the bar is going to be in here. But now I'm thinking, oh, now it's going to hook to the end of the leg like that. But now I'm kind of wondering if I should invert it. Still weld the washer to retain it. But put it right out here. But give it that angle to try my first idea. Where when you lift it, gravity makes it swing over. It's funny to say, but I think gravity is unreliable in this equation. But if I did that, I would activate this at the cam. Plan A. If it was out here, I could probably fold my legs up vertical for shipping. And that'd be really cool. Hmm. Day two. Um... The only thing I really came up with overnight was originally I thought for some reason this had to be all the way on one side of the cart. Then I realized, no, it can stay where I got it mocked up. It can stay in the center because it can pull to this pulley, a pulley back here, a pulley up here, and a pulley up there for the all four legs on this side. Same on the other side. So that's the plan. He's moving. Move faster. This is the drop zone. Okay, I got the leg reinforced temporarily. And honestly, it will have reinforcements like this when it's done also. I just put on one of the yokes. Seem to fit. So, this will go in there. I should probably go get my rod. And then, now that this is an assembly, that'll probably fall out right now. But now I get to test them. See how much upward stroke I need. I had a vision earlier that the medium I want to use for the cables, chains, whatever, it's probably going to be that like dog line stuff or clothesline. Like the, usually it's green covered, covered with green nylon or something. And it's cable. I'm going to hope to use these, well, I might buy some matching ones because I'm a stickler, plus I don't have eight, to hook. Okay, so when I want to de-leg the thing, I will pull the rod out to pull the leg pivot off. And then for the vertical pivot, I want to use this link to a um, eyelet in the leg itself. Yeah, it's coming together. So wouldn't you know it? I needed a lift kit, so that hole I already drilled. Not a big deal that there's a hole there, but hole's already drilled, I needed it lower. <laughs> but this is kind of an exciting stage. I have the rail in there mocked up and clamped on. I'll actually have braces going through to hold this better. And I think those same braces, well, they're gonna be down here sticking out two by fours. I think I'll try to use the same braces as my leg limits. 
So my legs need hard stops so they don't collide into each other. And I think that could do two things at once like that. So there's my joint in action. It can go left, right, up and down, if that wasn't already clear. Um, so now I'm gonna mock up the pulley up here and see how it does with the extend. I don't, the vehicle will have to be moving for the leg to actually pull back because it's gonna touch the ground. The vehicle will move and this leg will be idle, just pivoting on its own pivots. Then when the time comes, it'll yank the chain and lift it up and pull it towards the front. The trick about that is it's a dynamic feature, like it's not a timed thing. Like I think there's gonna be certain speeds where it walks better and then certain speeds where it's just kind of dragging its feet. Like if I really creep, I think the chain is just gonna, it doesn't have a way to differentiate between it's like up and over axis. It's just gonna pull them. So I'll show you. This is probably gonna look terrible and the chain's probably gonna fall off. Oops, <laughs> it looked worse than I thought and the chain fell off. But it did move, okay? <laughs> um, Plop this one out into it and the old one out. It's eight inches longer, it'll give me more leverage on the leg. I think if I get enough leverage, this won't be enough to make it equal, but if I got enough leverage where it's closer to teeter-tottering, I don't want it to teeter-tot because then the leg won't use gravity to land on the ground and move. So I'm just bringing it closer to that equilibrium to see if it'll actually affect it. I think it will. I don't know if it'll affect it to the amount I require, but it will affect it. All right, I'm in the cockpit. It didn't work. So I'd have to pull it really hard to get it to go up. It basically just skids, which makes sense. I don't know. It brings my brain a couple different ways. First would be actually do put a cam on this. So extend this rod out or build a wooden thing that goes out and then down here and then the cam will push it up. And this will pull it over, which is a possibility, but it seems like a lot of work. It might be the way to go. Another thing I thought of is, is there a way, if I put another pulley here, it'll lift it directly up. Is there a way to have it first lift up and then over? So another way I was thinking is a, a wheel that goes like this. Cause then it would be it, that up and over is taken care of. It wouldn't always be pulling from the same angle. It would lift and then move. Problem with that is I would need eight separate wheels. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm now looking at one pulley just to vertically lift it. And we'll have another system just to pull it forward. I think if we vary, I'm going to call this the watt, the Z axis up and down. If we vary this at a similar rate, I think it'll pull up. And then as it's going down, pull over and it could work. Then they both go slack for a cycle long enough to let the leg trail back naturally. I'm bringing a couple new things into the equation. Springs that I got at the flea market. And then I'm probably gonna put rubber feet on the bottoms. I have some of these, I also need more. I got a spring here. And now when you lift it, well, it moves pretty quick. That spring was a cool idea, but it was too indiscriminate on how fast it went. So I just used a hole saw to cut out a hole and made a little uh, prototype pulley. Yeah, sucker works. Now I used a hole saw in a previous uh, application. When I made a centipede, I made a little, a bunch of uh, wheels in it to move the legs. Now, Yeah, this, this lifts it up. So I think I'll, I'll uh, 
make more of these. I was going to glue the flanges together, then I realized the flanges probably don't have to turn, should they? Besides, should they turn and be bound to that center, or should I let the center just... I kind of let the center just spin. Maybe they'll scrape the side a little. But I can make pulleys instead of having to use store-bought ones, which... Well, I, of course I got this for a dollar at a flea market. But... If I bought that at TSC, I'd go way over budget. I don't even know if there is a budget, but it would have blew it with just pulleys. I just really like building stuff. I just plop this wheel out. I'm like, man, I just wish I had time to just build stuff. <laughs> I'm building stuff now, but I wanted to make a little truck, you know, like 18 of these. Okay, it is complicating somewhat just from a piece count perspective. So there's seriously be two pulleys for each leg. So 16 pulleys, but you can lift it with this one. And then you can move it forward with this one. So it's kind of beautiful. Forward. Okay, it is decided. Until proven otherwise, until otherwise thwarted, the plan is for this wheel not to rotate, but just oscillate. Uh, let's see, would I need more than 90 degrees? Maybe. And the way we're going to achieve that oscillation, if this is the wheel, there will be a flange bolting a wooden wheel to each side. Then there will be, it'll kind of be like a crankshaft that doesn't spin all the way. In the middle, there'll be an arm coming down with a link. Then there'll be a wheel on the ground with a connecting rod. And this will go like this. And this will just oscillate. Now I think this will work fine. The beauty in it will be on this wheel, I get to choose how much distance I want from the oscillation on where I take a wear on the radius that I pull from. So if I want a little oscillation, I go here. If I want a big one, I go here. The thing that I don't know yet is the gear ratio, like how big the wheel on the ground has to be. So I might make the wheel from scratch. Because I'm going to need a particular size wheel for the cycle to be a certain distance. It depends on how big these legs walk. It won't be a big wheel, I'm thinking. All right, well, the thinking has been getting so deep, I just want to do some busy work. So I set up my stop at various spots and cut out all the uh, leg segments and I'm going to end drill all of them except for the very tip that touches the ground. I label them all A, B, C, and D and X for the coaxa. Just eyeballing it about an inch from the edge in the center. So as you can see, I already did it a couple of times. So I've been leaving the one in there. I'll show you why. I leave one disc in there. A sacrificial, a sacrificial disc. Hope it didn't go yet. Okay, <laughs> but usually the sacrificial disc is down lower and I've been using it to help pry it out. I pry it out, pull it out, and do another leaving that disc in. That's the key. Now I'm going to sand the edges, the rough edges off all these. Hey guys, what's up? It's day three. And I'm about to just make some more pulleys. Okay, really, I am going to make pulleys. Um, I'm gonna make the flanges now. I got this big old hole saw that I used on the, again, I used it on the centipede project. And uh, 
I've also used it to cut a hole for my exhaust for the uh, bathroom, so that was candy. Here I go. I realized I didn't need those thick plywood ones, and I got this thin uh, masonite or MDF or whatever it is, and I think it'll be sufficient. So I've been doing about three or four at a time, and then prying them out of the cage here. And then with the aftermath, you can sell it as fine art. Yeah, I call it Spirals of Me. It's about society and how it's, uh, you know, really became unbonded. All my flanges are sanded down. Here is a finished Foley mechanism. I decided not to glue the centers to the flanges. I'm just going to have them loose in there. I feel like that gives it more opportunity to decide to spin, less friction. Washer on each side. I need to go get some hardware. I'm running out of bolts, but, uh, so I'm going to mount, there's going to be two for each leg and up and a forward thrust pulley. Fresh idea alert. Now I got some of these pulleys on here and I just think it's going to be too many pulleys. Like it's possible, but there'd be two pulleys per leg. So 16 pulleys. And I'm worried about the ropes. Now I, I can stagger them. I'm worried about the ropes colliding and I'm worried about needing more than one shaft. I might need two. So I had another idea. So see this leg there? Actually, maybe I'll bring it over here. What if I had flaps that were hinged at the top and had a limit on how low they could go? And there's a second rail under this, like another two by four, okay? And this ramp stays here the hinge will have to be flush on the top. It'd have to be just under here. Is this even possible? Hold on. <laughs> okay, I think I just found a big pitfall, but hear me out. Imagine this hinge is magic. It would push the leg up, fall off, and then when it retracts, the flap would go up, and then gravity would make it land back on. So it's like a valve almost. All right, time to stop dilly-dallying. I need two discs. Kind of handy that my miter table worked as a saw table for this. Now I know I plugged this sander a lot, but man, what would I do without it on this project? So I purposely left a little bit of pencil line so I can shave this down more accurate. And it's not going to be rolling, it's just going to be spinning. So honestly, I won't put that much work into it. I'll just make it look round. First rule of government spending. Why well, have one when you can have two at twice the price? So I found the center of the circle. Um, I used the arch method. Plot a point on the edge, strike an arc. I didn't strike the whole thing because I knew I just needed the intersecting points. Go to the other side. It don't have to be exactly 180. Here's the cool thing. It could be a little off. Go on the other side. Now really I put it with my thumb on the very edge, but then strike another. You get two intersecting points. Then I put the ruler across there, made a line. Did the same thing 90 degrees off. Again, it doesn't have to be, it could be like 50 degrees. But I went 90 degree off as best I could and did another set. Then you get the cross in the middle. That should be the, it'd be almost the exact center if I was plotting it on paper, but this little edge that, that pivots was kind of slipping off the edge. So I just held it there best I could. Again, these aren't rolling. These are just going to spin on an axis. So if they're just a little bit, of, if they have a little bit of radial run out, it's acceptable. Surely it's a misinterpretation, but the smell that I got from this reminds me of those prepackaged Rice Krispie treats when you get them hot, the weird marshmallow they use. It smells kind of good. But anyway, so now I center drilled both at the same time. Awesome. Now it should fit on this shaft. Probably a little bit loosely. Yep, that's fine. Mild moment of defeat. So... I almost had the cycle thing figured out until I realized I can't hook two things. Even if I stagger one high and one low, when that thing comes around, the cords will tangle. Like, so, the inner one, if I had a string on this and it came around, eventually this bolt is going to hit the string. This is a big... <laughs> big issue. So now I got to rethink how to move them all together, I think. Wow. All right, I think I'm down to 
two remaining ideas. One, going back to my cam idea, where a cam just lifts them. And then a hinge here that's at an angle, just gravity swings it up. That's a pretty good idea. I should probably just stick with it. Second idea is to have eight of these, one on each thing, and this bolt will lift up the leg and drop it down, and then slack. Lift up the leg, drop it down, and slack. The good news is I would keep all my rail parts I made so far, all those hinges there. So I'm leaning towards that, but is that unwise? Oh, because the hard part about this is all eight would have to be linked. So I would need a big belt or to make these gears, a cog belt would be best. Big update. So I got to ditch all these pulley idea and all the rope and cords and go back to the cam idea. Meaning I wasted a lot of time building pretty much most of this stuff. But these guys, I think I found a clever way to use these at least. These might be my hinges. So I plopped the skateboard bearing in there by countersinking it with my Dr. Robotnik bit there. And it works pretty good. So I needed a frictionless way or near frictionless. I'm going to have this tilted on a block and it's going to lift and the leg's going to drop and the ground is going to guide it. And it's going to lift. And since it's at a tilt, it should drop. That's the plan. But it's actually plan A my skateboard bearing bunker you know with that plan b that i was pursuing for a long time i really was going to miss an excuse to use skateboard bearings so i got two in here now i gotta upscale my list my shopping list to 5 16 bolts instead of a bunch of quarters because that's the size bolt that fits that's like your skateboard axle so uh um i think i just gotta cut down this leg mount this on there mount this to there and give it a little test run with the, and, and move my shafts outbound again, outboard again. Cool. Well, this alone works pretty good. That looks terrible. <laughs> okay, it's decided. I'm doing twin camshafts on here and they have to go opposing. So I wanna do a gear set. Now I watched a video about making gears on YouTube about eight months ago and some of it made sense. But I'm going to wing it. And uh, so I took my discs that are pretty darn round. I got increments. And the way I did that is kind of a mix of clever and luck. So I have this cog belt that's already cut. And I wrapped it around and it ended up landing almost perfect. So I marked every other tooth by hand, knowing that I needed bigger teeth than this. It needs to be a little bit more robust. So I then extended those lines just now. It was kind of also not precision work, but I went to the center there and went and extended the mark longer. And then I spun it and traced an inside, like the deepest part of the cut. So now this is where I'm especially winging it, but I think it should be good enough. There's a science to how the teeth actually, uh, the profile of the teeth for less friction and better meshing. I don't know the science though, but I think I'm going to get close by taking the radius, standing out here, any part on the curve, as long as I keep it the same. Actually, I don't have to keep it the same and marking the curve of the teeth this way, but I can't just mark it at the extremity. I have to mark it in the center of the depth. So it cuts in a little and out a little, I think. I'll show you, I'll, I'll make all the marks and show you. I should have mentioned too that I put a 5 16th bolt and a skateboard bearing in there to really give it a pretty good center. But anyway, there's the rough teeth markings, the bolder ones. Let's see if this actually works. I'm gonna take it to the uh, I am pleased with it so far. <laughs> Gotta test them before I spend the time to do all of them. 
Holy crap. That is not bad. I bet if I space them a little bit, give them a little bit of backlash, it might work as is. Holy crap. All right, day four. First, I gotta just clean this mess up so I can start again. <laughs> clean it up to start working again. I think the first project today, I think I need to build, I need to cut into this two by four, cut a notch out and put this wheel in and put a bolt through it. Well, there's serial number one. So I think I need to build a quick cam and test it. The leg will be so heavy on the outboard side that it'll keep this up on that end. The cam will come around. There won't be a gear. You're gonna have to imagine this is a cam lobe. It'll be mounted on the outside. I'm gonna cut some pieces and weld them to the pipe, I think and bolt them to the cam follower, or the cam lobe. And so that'll come around and be big, down. Up, come around and be big, down. So the only, main thing I gotta do now, I got this makeshift hinge. It's essentially what it's gonna be, because the idea is the legs will go completely up for storage and for transport. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna just have a pin where you have to pin it on or a bolt, or if I can make, if I have time to make a little pulley system. Cause I'm hoping I can crank a crank in the back and all these crank up. I have an idea for that, it's pretty simple. But also, I wanna see if I can also use that mechanism to be the limiting device, cause I still need chains or a cable to limit how far forward these can step in each cycle. All right, I'm looking at these. I'm like, I'm gonna need straps to bolt these on or build brackets or something. And these are nice, but they're two axis hinges. And I don't need this axis. I actually specifically need this knot. I need the arm or the leg not to be able to move this way. I think I'm switching back to the old hinges again. <laughs> they're not as sightly, but we're gonna be covering this with uh, a bed skirt anyway. <laughs> 